few days today, that I'm a little bit, we're going to be going over uh, uh, an example on how to derive the derivative of the sine function. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, write down the uh, instructions for the example. So for this example, we are going to prove uh, prove that so number one prove that the derivative of sine x, so basically dx of sine x, uh, equals cosine x um, using the definition mission uh, of uh, the derivative. All right. So um, that's the task for today. All right. So before we start the proof, I'm going to go over some key formulas or equations that are required in order for you to uh, successfully execute this proof. So let me write it down key formulas or equations. The first one has to do with the definition of derivative, the limit definition of derivative. So the derivative of a function dx of a function f of x is basically equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h uh, minus f of x divided by h. All right. That's uh, the main definition that we're going to be using to uh, to execute this proof. And then there are also two limits. Uh, formulas that you need to know uh, for this proof. So basically the first one is the limit as h approaches zero of sine h over h of sine h over h. Let me write that down again. Limit as h approaches zero of sine uh, sine h over h. This is the Sandwich theorem. Sine h over h uh, equals zero. And also you need to know that and actually equals one. And then another formula that you need to know is the limit is h approaches zero of uh, cosine h minus one over h equals zero. All right. So I know that you already studied limits. I assume you already studied limits. Um, you should know this a basic uh, rule for limits. Uh, and then additionally, you need to know this this identity is a, is a sum identity from trigonometry. So the sum sine of x plus h, or x plus y, is equal to sine x plus sine y plus sine x sine y. All right, so these are the key formulas, uh, one, two, three, four of these that we're going to be using um, to, to do our proof today, okay? Let me number them for you so when I refer back to them, you won't be confused. So this is number one, and then this is two, this is three, and this is formula number four, all right? All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, start on the proof. So for the actual proof, the main domain, proof. So what we want to do is we want to uh, let, well, let, let's start by writing let uh, f of x equal sine x. Uh, we must show that. We must show that um, the derivative of dx of f of x, which is basically derivative of uh, sine x, equals cosine x. Okay, this is the whole objective of our proof. That's what we want to do, okay? So let's go ahead and start with uh, the function. Uh, we know that the function is f of x, so we have uh, f of x equals sine x. Now let's take the derivative. So the derivative of f of x is basically the uh, derivative of sine x, okay? Now I'm going to use the first formula, the definition of derivatives, to uh, express this as a limit. So let's go back up. See this formula right here? Limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Uh, 
we're going to use this definition of derivatives to um, express this derivative of sine x. So what I'm going to do is all I'm just going to do is instead of writing f of x, I'm going to write sine and then substitute my input into the function sine. So it's going to be the limit as x I mean as h approaches zero. Limit as h approaches zero um, of sine x plus h. This is because the function here is f of x plus h, so f in this case is sine. And x plus h minus f of x is going to be sine x. You indicated here f of x is sine x. And then uh, this basically follows that f of x plus h is going to be sine x plus h, just to help you see the connection. All right? The whole thing divided by h. All right, now we're going to get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we need to break this down, the sine of x plus h. What we're going to use to break this down is uh, formula number four, which is the sum identities for sine, okay? So we're going to break down, break this down. So we're going to have, this is going to become the limit as h approaches zero. So sine x plus h is going to be broken down into sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h minus sine x, all right? And then the whole thing uh, divided by h. All right, now what we're going to do next is basically move stuff around and group them in a way where we can make use of these last two formulas, these two and three here of limit rules um, to finish it up, okay? So now what we're going to do, I'm going to move the sine x over to this side right here. So we're going to have the limit as h approaches zero, uh, sine x cosine h. So this sine minus sine will be, I'm going to move it over to negative sine x over here. Uh, and then plus cosine x sine h. All right. And then I'm going to distribute the denominator, break up the denominator into two. I'm going to make this into two fractions. So uh, sine x plus, um, you know what, let me just write it like this first. So I don't get anybody confused. Do one thing at a time. Uh, so divide the whole thing by h. Okay. So I just moved this term. I just moved it right next to the sine x over there. All right. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to group them. Okay. So you see these two? I'm going to group them together. Perfectly legal. And this one it by itself. Okay. So now I'm going to divide these two into two fractions, two separate fractions. So we're going to have the limit. As h approaches zero, of um, of sine x cosine h minus sine x. This one has its has own divided by h plus cosine x sine h divided by h. Okay. All right. Now I'm using. I'm going to factor out sign from this piece right here, so we'll have the limit as h approaches zero of sine x. I'm going to factor out sine x from these two, I'll be left with cosine uh, h minus, if I factor out sine from here, one, and then this whole story divided by h. And on this left side here, I'm going to write this as plus. I'm going to start with cosine. I'm going to write it as cosine x times sine h over h. What was that? What was that? Okay, so I just said, I just moved this cosine out of there. It's a product of the numerator, so I can do this just as they go, all right? So now, um, let's sim simplify further here. We're going to have the limit as h approaches zero. Now, I'm going to use the sum rules for limits, okay? This limit, the limit of the sum of two functions is the limit of the sum of the individual functions. So I can write it as limit as h approaches zero of sine x. Now notice I'm going to express sine x. I'm going to express write this in a different color so you can see what's happening here. Of cosine h minus one over h. Okay. Plus distribute this limit to this side limit as h approaches zero of cosine x. And I'm going to write this sine h over h in blue. So you can see it. Okay. 
All right. So you have that. Now, what am I going to do next? Uh, what, am I, what I'm going to do next is basically use the law of limits again, the product law of limits in this case, to finish this off. So if you have a product of two functions, the limit of the product of two functions is the uh, product of the individual limits. So I can basically write this as the limits as h approaches zero of sine x times the limit as h approaches zero of cosine h minus one over h, just distribute the limit to each function, plus the limit as h approaches zero of cosine x times the limit as h approaches zero of sine h over h. Now, we can now make use of uh, the formula two and three that we have up here. So the limit using the Swiss theorem, the limit of h approaches zero of sine h over h is one, and the limit of h approaches zero of cosine h minus one over h is zero. So we're gonna make the substitutions here, all right? So we're gonna have here a limit. Well, we can make the substitution uh, while we're at it. So we're gonna waste too much time. So in this one, I can make a substitution here, sine of zero, oh, sine of, uh, sine of uh, x, because this is independent, up, sine of x, and then the limit here, if you, uh, based on what we looked at up there, this whole expression here is sine zero, plus, and then this one is simply going to be cosine x, because this limit goes to h, and cosine x is independent of this, um, times, the limit of sine h over h is in the Swiss theorem or standard theorem is just one. Okay? So sine x, sine x times zero is zero. So we have zero plus cosine x, which equals cosine x. So that tells me that the derivative of the function, which was sine x, dx of sine x, equals cosine x. And that completes our proof. Okay. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can share the contents of this video with your friends via Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus. More videos can be found on myfoodserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.